Hello again. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about how to solve nonlinear equations using numerical methods. Now this is something we are going to need to do an awful lot in our undergraduate or even graduate careers and there's some very simple methods that are very robust. Robust means they work most of the time. So what I want to do here is I want to explain the idea of solving a nonlinear equation using an iterative method. When we say iteration, we means we guess at an answer, we do something to improve that guess, we evaluate it, we use that as the basis for the next estimate of the answer, the next guess, and we keep going. If we do this right, as we go through more and more calculations, more and more improved estimates of the answer, we eventually get as close as we need to be to the exact answer. Okay, so let me show you what this looks like in pictures, and then I'm going to give you an example of how to do this using numerical methods. Now, I only get 10 minutes for these videos, so it's probably going to take uh, two parts. So here, let's get started. Let's say we've got an equation here, and we can draw a picture of it. We can make a plot of the equation, and we need to find a root of the equation. That is, we need to find a value of x that makes y zero. That's what root means. So let's let's just draw. Let's just say that's that's my equation. That's f of x, or that's y. And this is where I'm, what I'm trying to find. That point right there. That's the root of the equation. Now, why would we be trying to find this? There's all kinds of good physical reasons. In dynamics class, you'll learn that if you uh, if you uh, have a body that's traveling in ballistic flight and there's no aerodynamic drag, the shape of its path is a parabola. If you want to know where it hits the ground, you have to find the root of the parabola, where y equals zero. So if you want to know the range, you have to find a value of x that makes y equals zero. Just one of many, many, many examples. So there's lots of physical reasons why we would want to know where some equation crosses through the zero point. And we're also going to assume that there are mathematical reasons why we can't just solve for this directly. I'll show you in a minute. But there are some very, very good reasons why we can't just write down some algebraic expression. Many equations don't have a closed form solution to them. Right? So let's try this. Let's, let's do, uh, this is called Newton's method. Isaac Newton was the guy, first guy to propose this since he had, uh, was one of the two developers of calculus. He was pretty much the first guy who could have proposed this. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take an initial guess, and let's just take that initial guess right there. We'll call that x1. Now, most uh, numerical algorithms need an initial guess. You have to start somewhere, and usually the program isn't smart enough to be able to guess on its own where you should start. So we're going to give an initial guess here. Let's see if I can get that a little straighter. There. That's a little better. Okay. Well, at this point right here, which we'll call y1, we're going to do something. We're going to calculate the slope at y1, and we're going to extend that all the way down to here. This is a straight line that's tangent to that point. If you're into um, Taylor series approximations, this is a first order Taylor series uh, approximation to that. So this is going to be x2. And that's going to be y2. Okay. Uh, well, actually, we're going to call, we're going to say this is y2 right here. Okay. But this and this don't match each other. This is an approximate root. It's not exactly the root. So what we're going to do now is we're going to recalculate this, and we're going to draw another straight line approximation. I guess that's straight. And we're going to find a new estimate of the root. That's now x3. And we do the same thing, go up, find another slope, and all of a sudden, x4 is now very, very close to the root. So what I've done is I've started out somewhere, make a, a very rough approximation, say, well, that's not very good. So I'm going to go down here, do the same thing, extend the slope back right there. Okay, well, that's better. That distance is smaller than that one, so I'm getting closer extend that down again, and now I'm very, very close. Now, there are some reasons why this doesn't work out every time, but it's pretty robust. It'll work most of the time, all right? or a lot of the time. Maybe I should say that. Now, 
let's get back to why in the world would you want to go through this. Let me give you an example of an equation that I give my students a lot. Solve that. So my students look at this, most students who are beginning math students will look at this and say, oh well, the inverse of a cosine function is the arc cosine. So I'll do I'll take arc cosine of both sides. When you do that, you're going to get this. There. This is a problem. You're not any closer to a solution here than you are there. So now what do you do? Well, I don't know, you can maybe set that equal to that. I mean, there's, there's nothing you can do here. You can play around with the, with the trig and the algebra for quite, quite a while, and you're never going to get x on one side of the equal sign and something else on the other side. There is no closed form expression for x. There's no way to write down some convenient uh, uh, expression for x. You have to do this numerically or use some other method, but just algebra and trigonometry isn't going to do it. So Newton's method is a great way to do this. So let's try that. Now I actually printed out a copy of the of the, some functions here. I haven't tried this before, so let's see how this works. There. There, isn't that high tech? There. There's the equations we're looking for. Let me move those up a little bit. Okay, what I did here, there's actually two expressions. This red line right here is cosine of x. And this goes from minus 10 to 10. This straight uh, blue line here is x over 5. So wherever these, the red line and the blue line cross each other, this expression is true. Now I'm going to get rid of this because this doesn't help us any. So wherever those two cross each other, this expression is true. Well, there's one right there, there's one right there, and there's one right there. So there's three possible roots to this equation. Now, the other way to do this is to say okay, rewrite this as that. All I do is subtract x over 5 from both sides. And now all I'm trying to do is find the root of that equation. These two are mathematically identical to each other. And so what I'm doing now, I'll draw this, this x equals 0 line in here in pen. And there it is. So there's your three roots. That horizontal line is where y equals 0. And right there, right there, and right there are the roots. Now I've tried to plot this out on uh, equivalent axes. That also goes from zero, minus 10 to 10. And it's the same size here. So if I've done this right, that point matches that one, that one matches that one, and that one matches that one. And they do. So here's what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to solve this equation, finding out where those two lines cross. Well, that's hard to do. I'm going to rewrite it as this and find the roots of that equation. Now, I've got, I'm 823 into this, so I think I better stop. I'll uh, start again on the next video, and we'll go through Newton's method for this expression. Okay? What we're going to do is we're going to start at some point, and that point I'm going to pick is, my initial point is going to be x equal 1 half, just because it's a convenient thing to pick. And we're going to go through four iterations, and, or three iterations I guess, and we're going to find the right answer. Okay?